Why is love? People ask all the time, what is love? But has it ever occurred to you to ask, why is love? Why does such a thing as love exist in the first place? And more importantly, why does it hold such a primary place in our lives? Why is love? Here's a quick example, maybe a silly example, but it's a valid example of the universal preeminence of love in our lives. Have you ever noticed that some of the most popular TV shows over the past decade, TV comedies, who've been among the top shows on TV, like The Big Bang Theory or Modern Family or The Goldbergs, have you ever noticed in those shows that, that in basically just about every episode there's a big feel-good moment at the end? Now mind you, these are comedies. But they don't simply stop at tickling our funny bone. They feel obligated to actually pull at our heartstrings. They feel the need to pull at our heartstrings. Why is that? Why do they do that? I mean, you can be sure that if the writers and producers of these shows could get us to tune in, could get millions upon millions of people to tune in week after week, could, could, could have gained the same popularity with these shows by just telling the jokes, that they would stop there. But they know better. They know that if they're going to get the kind of audiences these shows have gotten, that they have to have those feel-good moments. And not just have those feel-good moments, but showcase them. These feel-good moments come at the climax of the shows. Have you ever noticed that? that? They're actually more important than the jokes. Oh, we tune in for the jokes. We want the laughs. But what keeps us coming back, what really endears us to these shows, what creates the loyalty to these shows to, to gain such widespread popularity, the, the popularity that they have, is those feel-good moments. <laughs> have you noticed that these shows have even begun to start preaching love? They, they, whether it's through the character's dialogue or the voiceover of a narrator, these shows, when it comes to these big feel-good moments, explicitly give us exhortations. They exhort us to, to love, to, to treasure, to value the relationships in our lives, not to take them for granted, to be, be kind and compassionate to strangers and so forth. They're actually preaching love. Why is love? Of course, if you don't believe in God, if you think that all there is to, to reality is the materialistic universe, then you're forced to, to say, to conclude, that love is nothing more than a trick of evolution. It's kind of an accidental byproduct of natural selection, the haphazard firing off of neurons in our brain. There's nothing more to it than that. <laughs> or as Bill Nye, the science guy, puts it. We're just a speck, on a speck, orbiting a speck, among other specks. In other words, the sensation of love really amounts to nothing. There's no meaning in it. There's no significance, no value to it. All the love we experience in our lives amounts to nothing, to, to nada, zero, zilch. But there's something that doesn't sit right with us about that explanation. There's something about it that, that we just can't Accept just like with the the um, the experience, the reality of uh, human rationality or human consciousness. Just like with the experience of beauty. Just like with our passion for justice. Just like with those those three areas. When it comes to love, there there's something about it which doesn't allow us to think that it can be reduced to some kind of um, biochemical illusion, some kind of materialistic explanation. We know, like we deeply know, we profoundly know, we intuit that there has to be more to it than that. The, the phenomenon of love is just too rich and too complex and too beautiful to be reduced to a biochemical illusion. And we know that. I mean, we really know that. And the evidence that we really know that is the fact that virtually no human being on earth can live as if love is simply a trick of evolution, a biochemical illusion. Virtually no human being on earth can live as if love, the relationships in their lives, ha has no meaning, including Bill Nye, <laughs> including people who claim that all there is to this universe is the materialistic reality around us and that love is simply the haphazard firing off of neurons in your brain. Even they can't live as if that's all there is to love. Ask any parent who's holding their child, if the bond that they feel with their child, if they can believe, if they can live, as if that, that's nothing more than a trick of evolution. Just ask any two lovers or, or two dear friends if the love that they've experienced with one another is simply nothing more than a chemical reaction, like, like the kind of chemical reaction you can perform in a lab. 
Just ask any human being who's ever experienced love for themselves, if they can actually believe, can, can really live as if the relationships that they've had in their lives have no meaning, no significance, no value. No, with all the scientific knowledge we have, with all that we understand in our modern scientific world about things like evolution or the biochemistry of our brains, virtually no human being can live as if love is simply a trick of evolution. If there's nothing more to it than some kind of illusion, biochemical illusion, virtually no human being can live as if love isn't more real than the air that we breathe. We, we intuit, we profoundly intuit that love transcends the physical, that it is indeed more real than the air that we breathe. Why is love? In John chapter 15, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. He's talking to his disciples. And then a few verses later, he tells them, he tells his disciples, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Even as I have loved you, you must love others. Those are remarkable verses. Because here Jesus is, the, the second person of the Trinity, the eternal Son of God. And he's telling his disciples, and by extension us, he's telling them that, that the way that, that God loves within the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the way he's experienced that love within the Trinity, he has shared with them. He's given to them. And that they now should take that experience of his love, the kind of radical, unconditional love that he showed them, and that they should show that love towards one another. <laughs> See, according to Jesus, the, the reason love exists in the first place is because God is love. According to Jesus, the reason love has such a primary place in our lives is, is because it is the essence of, of, of what holds the Trinity together. It, it's, it's what bonds the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, binds them together in unity. According to Jesus, the reason love holds such a primary place in our lives, the reason love exists in the first place, is because God is love and He's created us for that love, to receive it, to experience it, and then to share it with one another. <laughs> now that's an explanation we can live by. Why is love? Because God is love, and He's created us for His love, to experience it and to share it with one another. How do you account for the phenomenon of love? I'd love to hear your comments on that or any other comments that, that you have, any other questions, comments, feedback you have. You can go to the Contact EJ page of the Raising Jesus website and leave them there. Also, if you haven't had a chance to yet, would you please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel? Thank you.